So recently I released a video talking about some tips and tricks for Kingdom Hearts 1. As my friend wanted to get into the series and I wanted to make a video to help him with the early game. And honestly, while making it, I had a lot of fun making that video. So I've just decided to do this for the other Kingdom Hearts games as well. So here's the second installment of the Tips and Tricks series. This time focused on the GBA slash PS2 remake, Chain of Memories. Before we begin, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. With that out of the way, let's get started. So this first tip ties into one of the biggest changes this game had, and that was how the level up system works. Now instead of the first game where you would level up and gain a boost into their attack, health, magic, etc., Chain of Memories has you actually choose from one of three choices. You can increase your health, your card points, or learn a new ability called a Slight. Seems pretty simple, but there is something you should know. The increases for each one won't go on forever, as each one caps at a certain point. For health, it'll max out once you reach 650. Slights will max out as 11. And for card points, well, that one's a bit tricky, as while mine maxed out at 650, you can actually forego leveling up health or slight so you can get more card points. I personally recommend foregoing slights myself, as you don't really get any useful ones until late game. And there are several you can find that are just as useful, if not more useful, than the ones you get through leveling up. But we'll get to that next. So, in the tip above, I covered the fact that you could gain up to 11 slights throughout your leveling process. But those 11 aren't the only ones you can obtain throughout the game. You see, throughout your playthrough, you can gain things known as door cards to help you progress through the game. And there are special door cards that lead to areas containing special treasures that can include either an all new keyblade, a new summon, spell, or item card, or they can contain an all new slight ability. And these ways of gaining them are actually how you receive some of the if not the absolute best slights in the entire game. As another note, you actually gain a lot of slights the game doesn't tell you whenever you pick up a new item, spell, or magic card. For example, every time you get a fire card, you can change those together to make Firega. Same with Blizzard, and Thunder, and Cure. The game never really tells you this. It's one of those piece it together on your own kind of things, which I really respect in all honesty. I like that it's not completely spoon-feeding it to you, it trusts your intelligence. Which is what I don't do since I make these videos. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's move on to number three. Alright, so for this one, I'm gonna tackle something that I myself wished I really knew when I played this for the first ever time. And that is the card number system. Now when it comes to the card system in this game, or more specifically the numbers on the cards, the game explains to you that the higher number card will win out in a clash, resulting in a card break towards the opponents. But what they don't tell you is that the numbers don't actually mean shit when it comes to actual attack power. You could have 10 number 9 kingdom key cards in your deck, and they will always, and I mean always, do as much damage as the number 1 kingdom key. The one thing I do need to mention is that the card's attack powers can be viewed within the deck building area, but me being a dumb 8 year old who never checked and figured that shit out, yeah let's just say I uh, I always wondered why I could never fit my deck with so many powerful cards. Anyways moving on. Alright let's talk about magic for this tip. Now in the original Kingdom Hearts game there were enemies who were able to absorb magic attacks if they were hit with a spell of their respective element. Red Nocturnes with Fire, Blue Rhapsodies with Blizzard, and Yellow Operas with Lightning. And this does return in Chain of Memories. However, this time, it also applies to boss fights as well. Now, not for every boss fight in the game, as every one of the what I like to call memory card bosses don't have those kinds of strengths or weaknesses, barring like Hades and maybe Maleficent? But the bosses known as Axel, Larxene, and Vexen will not only not take any damage from their respective elements, but they will also regain health from it. This is going to be something you need to remember, as it can go a long way in helping in implementing your optimal deck strategy for dealing with them. Or you can just be stuck with having Donald absolutely betray you, 
by using Thunder on Larkseen and giving her basically her entire health bar back. <sighs> he wonders why we like leaving him on the ship. Alrighty, we've reached the end, and for the end of this list, I think it's time we talked about one of the single most helpful things to know about in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, and that is how incredibly useful the gimmick cards are in combat. You see, gimmick cards are these little cards that have a green Mickey Mouse symbol on them that you only find during the memory card boss fights. However, unlike the normal ally cards you gain, which give you simple attacks like Donald casting magic and Goofy ramming people with a shield, along with all the other Disney allies, these cards are used on bosses to give you a huge advantage. An example of this is when you fight the guard armor boss in Traverse Town, when the card is used, it breaks apart the armor, allowing you free hits to its body. Or when you're battling the Trick Master in Wonderland, it'll spawn a table so you can jump on and this allows you easy access to its weak point. It's an incredibly useful asset to wield in boss fights. However, you can only get these cards through card breaking your opponent, and even then sometimes that won't work. The game isn't really super clear on how you get them even now, so the best tip I can give for you is just rely on the card break system. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. Once again, make sure to like and sub if you enjoyed this content, and sorry if this video wasn't as deep as the original video was. Chain of Memories isn't as intricate with its mechanics as Kingdom Hearts is. My guess is due to them streamlining things so it could work on the GBA. Not really sure about that. Have a wonderful day everyone though, and I'll see you in the next video.